First of all, a short disclaimer. This is one of three videos where I test the MagSafe power banks. This one is focused on iPhone 12 Pro Max, but the other two feature the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 mini. The links are down in the description. Choose a video that applies to your model or feel free to watch all three videos, but keep in mind that I reused some footage so you may see some repeating parts. Also, if you're watching this after 2021 iPhones come up, this video is still valid and all the tests are valid because the batteries are rumored to be enlarged insignificantly. Oh, and also this video is brought to you by me. All the devices in this video either belong to me or to my friends. So you're the one who makes the final decision. It's Alex here. Welcome to the Geek Stable. Let's get started. So this time Apple didn't release the battery case as they do every summer. So now we have this, a MagSafe battery pack. But the world has made some more MagSafe power banks already, so now we have to find out which one is the best to use. Today we'll be testing these models. Anchor Power Core 5K, Enforcer Magnetic Power Bank, Giga Portable Charger, Apple MagSafe battery pack, and Hyperjuice Magnetic Wireless battery pack. Enforcer and Jigga are basically OEM devices, so you might see them under different brands or labels, so just remember them visually. People really love iPhone 12 Pro Max, not only for the biggest screen in the lineup, but also for its battery. I've been using iPhone 12 Pro Max for 10 months already, and I'm still satisfied with how long it can live from a single charge. But once we go on a vacation with a lot of navigations and camera usage, we might need a top up to the battery juice. And it's quite challenging for the power banks to charge it from 0 to 100% while the screen is on. The device gets hot quite a bit and the charging speeds go down. Note how Jigga delivered 80% in 4 hours, but then it needed 3 hours more to get to 83%. Let's get into more detail and see why it's happening. Apple really cares about the temperature of the device because no one wants the Galaxy Note 7 problem when Samsung had to recall all the models to prevent them from a random battery explosion. Also, when the temperature goes high, you may notice that the flashlight stops working or the phone goes to a complete inresponsive condition. Also, it's better not to keep the battery charged to 100% for a long time because this reduces its durability. That's why once the iPhone's battery gets charged to 80%, the charging speed slows down. We might have a situation when we'd like to charge more than one device at a time. So in my next experiment, I charge the iPhone 12 Pro Max via MagSafe and iPhone 11 Pro via USB-C. Anchor cannot charge two devices at a time. Once you attach it to the phone, the USB-C output is disabled. Enforcer is able to do that, but we might want to skip this option since almost all the energy goes to the iPhone 11 Pro. Giga and Hyper did it much better by splitting the energy in a more fair way. Of course, the wired connection gets a priority, but at least the MagSafe is not lost and forgotten. Apple's Lightning has no output, so you won't even charge the first generation Apple Pencil from it. Giga actually has a second port and yes, it's capable of charging three devices at a time. I was able to charge the iPhone 12 Pro Max to 69%, Apple Watch to 100%, AirPods Pro to 100% and their case to 81%. In my next test, I had a phone with a zero battery and a power bank with a zero battery. I've connected them together and charged via a single power source. First thing you might notice is that Giga cannot do a pass-through charging. It disables all outputs once we start charging it. After the phones got charged, Anchor, Enforcer and Hyper needed one and a half hours more to be charged as well. But in case of Enforcer, it could charge the phone only up to 95% and then it was just keeping the level for three hours. Apple has a deeper integration with iOS so we can see the exact percentage through time. Apple Battery Pack is the only one that has a reverse charging functionality when the phone is connected to the power source and it gives some power to the attached battery. And here we may notice that the normal mode completes in 8.5 hours, but the reverse charging mode couldn't pass the 90% mark. It kept like that for 3 hours as well. So in the case of iPhone 12 Pro Max, I would avoid reverse charging. And in general, I'd recommend charging the power bank separately. Then you'll get them ready as soon as the following. Enforza has two ports, Lightning and USB-C, so we have more freedom in charging. But via USB-C, the job is done in 40 minutes faster. 
Also, I'm pretty sure that the LED indicator was misbehaving because 50% in two minutes looks unrealistic to me. Anchor and Hyper with the same capacity reached 100% in two and a half and three hours respectfully. This result looks quite fine to me unless I'm in a rush. But I try to keep my power banks charged and I recommend you to do the same. Apple has just a single indicator that is either orange or green and there is no way to check the percentage except connecting the phone to it and look at the widget. So what power bank I would recommend? The most thin power bank is Enforza. Also it has a nice kickstand if you wish to watch a movie. But Enforza has the worst build quality compared to others and I could smell some rosin while it was charging a phone. Anchor is probably my favorite in this experiment because it provided the highest percentage among 5k power banks and could pass through the charge in around 8 hours, which is okay for an overnight charging. Well, but it cannot charge two devices at a time though. Giga is the big guy with a double capacity, so if you need the biggest battery possible with an option to charge your accessories at the same time, it's the way to go. I would go with Hyper if you cannot get Anchor or the price is much better, or you need to charge two devices at a time really often. It charged 12 Pro Max a bit slower than Anchor and needed more time to get from 0 to 100. Apple's MagSafe power bank is really hard to recommend. Its capacity is small, its charging speed is slow, its price tag is high. Basically, you should buy it only if you don't trust the third-party power banks, you need a deeper iOS integration, and you need the Apple logo on the back. So this will be it from me. Hope this was useful for you and now you'll make the right choice. Please share it with me in the comments. It's been Alex and see you at the Geekstable. Bye-bye.